It's time for a trip to the Sunshine State. Daytona is up next and is often a pivotal round of the Monster Energy Supercross Championship. It's near the midpoint of the series and also marks a shift to softer racetracks for the next month or so. The hard-packed tracks of the West Coast won't be revisited until we arrive in Denver this May. The soft tracks of March and April will provide opportunity for those whose strengths align. Think about riders like Eli Tomek, Cooper Webb, Aaron Plessinger, and even the recently maligned Justin Barcia. These upcoming rounds provide a big chance for them to capitalize, bringing a historically close championship even closer. This round is the pivot point and could signal a few different directions. Something to keep in mind as we leave Daytona on Saturday night. Who captured the momentum? Did Jet Lawrence grab a win at a track that Eli Tomac has dominated and Webb has six podiums? Or did the established hierarchy exude their prowess? The start for this year's Daytona splits the track in two as the start chute heads directly towards the Speedway grandstands. Instead of the usual slight bend to the left, this year sees a grass-based 180 to the left and through a tunnel. Watch for this grass to be slippery and possibly wreak havoc when riders apply the front brakes. The 2009 first corner debacle was a good example of what can happen when the braking zone is treacherous. Cooper Webb now has six wins in Arlington and two overall on the season. He's never won in Daytona, but his six podiums are proof that he is ready to give it another go. One reason being, Webb got shafted out of a Daytona main event win by a lapper, and another reason being that this race is somewhat considered to be one in the bag for Eli. I'm sure Cooper's well aware of that and will be on his game to make sure Eli doesn't leave Daytona full of confidence. I see Cooper and Eli running the show at the Speedway. Eli Tomac charged back from an early crash to a runner-up finish in Arlington and with it, renewed confidence that he can be the same Eli from 2022 and 2023. Tomac two consecutive podiums for Eli. But even in beast mode, I don't see anybody bringing the fight to Webb. Jet Lawrence mistakes Eli Tomac for one of the scooter-powered Daytona security guards. Jet said prior to Anaheim 1 that will be make history every race until someone straight up beats him. Riders have been finishing in front of them left and right. But I feel like last week was not Jet beating himself. That was Cooper pushing him that caused that mistake. Hunter Lawrence has two top fives in a row. While that may not make global headlines, he has shown big improvement since the beginning of the season. Hunter rents. I could see Hunter finishing right behind Jet. Whether Jet finishes fourth or Jet finishes 14th, it just seems like he tends to run into a wall when he is about to overtake Jet. Chase Sexton, the defending champion, showed signs of life in qualifying last weekend, but bad starts kept him out of any sort of contention. I just don't think Chase has really been on the KTM long enough to be able to be comfortable on such an awkward style track. If Chase is still dealing with that injury at all, this is not an ideal situation for him. Hayden Deegan won the first 250 main event of his career and climbed right back into the title fight. Max Anstey's 2-6 finishes, incredibly, have him with the points lead and coveted red plate. Cameron McAdoo has two heat wins and outside of a first-turn crash in Detroit, has looked incredibly good in 2024. Tom Vial was lucky to even be racing Saturday night after a huge crash in qualifying left him struggling to remount his KTM. Still, he found the resiliency to snag a podium in Arlington as he continues to prove his SX worth.